second session of today. We had an opening session. Um, and uh, now we start with the session on the media and technology sector. Just let me pick my Microsoft PowerPoint here. Okay. Can you see the slides? Yes. Yeah. Okay, great. So well, good morning, everyone, especially a very good morning to uh, Professor Napoli, who's calling in very early on from the United States. I think even at midnight, it is even there. So thanks a lot. 4.30 for... a.m. Oh, am I late? Okay, yeah, and you know, anyway, thanks for the dedication then for being here mm -hmm. and, and uh, joining this uh, very, uh, this very interesting session on the media and technology sector. Um, uh, today, what we're going to talk about is uh, this agenda. I'm going to just open it a bit more. Uh, so first of all, a welcome to everybody who will be able and willing to be uh, participate in this session, uh, especially also the invited people, uh, the external invited people on discussing uh, the work we have done in the committee. Uh, then I'm going to give the floor to the external media and technology AI experts to talk a bit about their perspective on the report and on their uh, way of how they perceive the influence of uh, developments AI regarding media and technology sector and especially then highlighting the seven key requirements which have been introduced, introduced this morning. And then uh, later on, then we have a break of five minutes, as is always uh, good when you have a two hour Zoom meeting to have some time for uh, recovery. Then after the break, we're gonna give the floor to the committee members of this uh, specific sector and have their intake on the issues being discussed already by the external speakers, but also their views on what led them to their contributions in the report. And at the end of this session, we're gonna have uh, in a debate, a panel debate round table, and hopefully also some Q and A from the people uh, now uh, calling in and listening to this session. First of all, let me say that when you do such a thing, like looking into the impact of AI and what is happening, uh, in uh, society. Uh, as a social scientist, you're always very uh, interested in what is the effect on society, what is the effect on people, and what, what, what do we need to know to know really exactly how important these kinds of sometimes overhyped technological developments have on our uh, society. And in order to do this in a sensible way, it's, it's, it, it, this is why this approach is so uh, good from the AI for People Consortium is to look at different contexts and see how AI, artificial intelligence has an impact on different contexts. And the context we are looking into today here in this session is the context of media and technology. Uh, so this means that what we're gonna do is introduce a bit what were the report's aims? What did we want to do? What was our aim? with this report as very much aligned with all the other uh, sectors and their investigations. Then looking at how we did this, who was part participating in this, uh, in this research and uh, give, give a bit oversight of the contents. And then of course, the main uh, topic of today is the opportunities and risks these AI uh, developments have for the media and technology sector and the kind of recommendations or guidelines one can deduct from that. So the assignment we got uh, from uh, the AI for People Consortium was to look into two main research questions. First of all, try to understand how the seven key requirements being introduced this morning by the high level expert group on, uh, on artificial intelligence. So the seven key requirements by that group, how do they impact the media and technology sector? And based on that, and very important as we want to go into deliberation with uh, policy in this regard, especially European level policy, what kind of guidelines, what kind of recommendations should we, could we keep deduct from that? Of course, if you want to do something like that, you first need to understand what are we talking about? When you talk about the media and technology sector, we talk about mediation, eh? a, a famous framework by Nicholas Carnum, a media scholar has been talking about, if you talk about mediation, you see three essential levels. Eh? 
We have the level of the human agents and how they mediate communication, for example, referring to journalists as their role in society and democracy of mediating information towards the society. We have the level of content and what is happening there, how is content framed, with the language issue, the kind of uh, elements that are very essential to understand from a semiotic perspective also, what is the, the meaning of content and how is it, is it, is it uh, encoded and decoded by people. And a third level, and of course the level which is the focus of this session and this, uh, uh, this event is the technological system. So the, the technological mediation and how is technology taking a place in mediating things, information, communication that is happening in society. And each of these, these three levels of course have overlaps. Eh? So if you talk about technological systems and human agents, you talk about data journalism, for example, or when you talk about the overlap of human agents and uh, technology and content together, you talk about how legacy systems within media sector have been influenced by what's happening in, in digital platforms and these kinds of issues. So you have different angles to look at to that. If you want to know more about that, please do read our report. These three levels and the, how they interlink, of course, then the issue is how this does, how does this has been uh, an effect uh, how has have the seven key requirements have an effect on each of these three levels and the interrelation between these three levels? And then you see on the on the on the outside the seven key requirements which we're going to look into. How did we work? Very quickly, there was a nine-month initiative based on a multi-stakeholder committee with people from academia and industry. Uh, kind of a bottom-up approach also there. We want uh, we we each of the committee members. Uh, was asked to bring in their best practices and worst practices regarding what they saw as essential for AI in media and technology sector. And parallel with that, of course, we kept on monitoring the European AI governance initiatives. Most uh, recently, of course, also the European Parliament initiatives in that regard. The authors of the report in the end were these people uh, as being also part of the committee. As I mentioned already, there's a collection of people from academia being specialized in AI, in media and technology sector, and also people, people from uh, the industry in different uh, sectors. Uh, the report itself, quickly, uh, an overview of the report you will find, you have received normally, or you will be able to receive soon the full report, where you see where we first give, of course, the, the definition of what are we talking about, related also to AI governance uh, initiatives in Europe, and then uh, going into each of the uh, each of the two research questions, as, as I mentioned earlier already. Now, what are then, to go directly to the core of our talk today, uh, what are then what we see as a committee uh, as the main opportunities and risks for the media and technology sector? Of course, this is a very broad topic. Eh? So in order to bring some order in this topic and to organize our thinking and uh, the kind of uh, recommendations we can deduct from that, we first needed to, needed to cluster all the input we got within the committee and the kind of uh, issues we have been discussing. And when you talk about the impact of data and AI on a sector like media, and communication. In fact, you could cluster these kind, this kind of impact on four clusters, four kind of uh, application teams, you could say. And first of all, you have the automating data capture and processing angle, uh, which means that you kind of look into how is data being captured and processed and then being reused to generate specific kinds of content in media sector, talking about personalization of content, of course. But also very importantly, as a huge part of the media sector is dependent on an advertising driven uh, business model, also looking into what is happening on the level of automating uh, marketing in this regard, looking at behavioral targeting, looking at personalization of advertising. So these kinds of issues are also very essential when you want to understand what AI means for media. The second cluster is that talking about automating content generation uh, which means, which looks, of course, at tools, systems, AI systems that help, for example, news 
reporting, or in a bad way that could lead to issues of deep fakes, where you even are not able to see the difference between real visual images and as, as synthetic visual images. So this is a very crucial issue, which might also need special attention. The third cluster we are identifying is then automating content mediation, meaning you look into how these digital platforms that have a huge impact on the media and communication sector, how do they do, do they mediate content? Eh? What, is, what is happening, especially on the level, of, for example, of, of moderation, moderation of contentious content, uh, looking at issues what we are experiencing today, issues of infodemics, where you see a lot of disinformation happening regarding uh, the crisis, the pandemic uh, crisis, for example. So, but how do these platforms are tackling this? What can be the role of the legacy media systems in this regard? And how can we deal with this in a more uh, sustainable and healthy way? The fourth uh, kind of uh, cluster we are identifying is automating communication. Uh, so this means when you go outside towards citizens, towards consumers, towards people, how do you automate the interaction with these people? Uh, talking about smart speakers, chatbots, and all kinds of systems that kind of automate uh, directly in a, in, a, in, a, in a limited way or an extensive way, the communication. And there it becomes very essential, of course, as a, as a citizen to still know I am talking to a real person or I'm talking to a robot, for example, and you need to have some human agency on that level in that regard. So these are the kind of four clusters we have identified. And then if you, what we did in our committee while preparing this report is then how do these, do each of these uh, kind of uh, teams, application teams relate to the seven key requirements for trustworthy AI. And then based on the discussions we had and based on the validation afterwards, what you, we notice is that first of all, if you look at the, the kind of uh, significance each of the key requirements has, the committee found that each of them has at least a high significance. A couple of them even we found to have a very high significance. If you pick them out, the last ones, we talk about the issue, for example, of transparency, understanding what is happening in media when it's being when it's interacting with artificial intelligence. It's a very essential issue to talk about. A second one is very being seen as very, having a very high significance is about accountability, uh, being sure that the, 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 the industry and the governments and the citizen, citizen science and uh, civil society organizations do have an, an insight on who is accountable for which kind of content generation, which kind of content mediation and so on. And thirdly, also very important is the issue of human agency and oversight to make it possible that on each, in each step of this trajectory that people still have an, an impact and have an insight that things uh, based on transparency can be changed and there is some agency on that level. Now, Based on that, we come to the, finally to the recommendations of uh, our report. And looking into this, we have also clustered these recommendations into three different uh, clusters. First of all, a cluster more related to what, the, does, what do our findings mean for people in Europe mainly. And uh, so what we want to do with this the cluster is to address the issues of data power, data power giving agency, giving also uh, a kind of agency to people and kind of redressing this uh, possible power asymmetry in that regard uh, based on positive obligations. Main key requirements in this angle are then human agency and oversight, privacy and data governance and transparency. If you look into the four recommendations we kind of uh, developed in the report is that first of all, if you talk about people and their understanding of what is happening, it's also of course about having a clear and strong consent issue, very much in line, of course, with the GDPR, where we talk about opt-in and we have some transparency obligations regarding how systems are being developed, how they're being tested and trained. The second recommendation in this cluster is then talking about if you have that insight, there should be some agency, some data power, you could say, on the redress mechanism that people still have a have possibility 
to know what is happening and to have a way of redressing the possible negative uh, uh, um, events that are happening based on AI decisions. A third important recommendation in this regard is also strengthening in the benefit of citizens, the process-based co-regulation and oversight on AI transparency and explainability, uh, which means that you kind of try to make systems that are using AI responsible how they're using their AI. It's about, for example, trying to avoid that there is algorithmic amplification of disinformation and to develop systems in such a way that this is not happening and making these systems, these, these uh, organizations responsible for that. And finally, fourth recommendation is ensuring that based on that, you have always a multi-stakeholder process, which looks into the possible consequences of uh, for people of AI systems. When you talk about predictive analytics and the kind, the way that personal data are used, for example, in marketing automation, when you talk about sentiment analysis on a large scale, or even, and also when you talk about emotional AI and how AI is able to understand also emotions of people. The second big cluster is then what we would call empowered by design and risk assessment. Uh, empowered by design, align a bit with the, the famous notion of data protection by design. You want to have, you want to develop systems that empower citizens from the start. So that take into account the role and the, uh, the, the empowerment of citizens in relation to these kinds of AI systems. This of course links a lot to key requirements of human agency, transparency, but also taking care of diversity issues, non-discrimination and fairness. And in the end, leading them to more sustainable societal environmental surrounding built on a technical robust system that is uh, able to be redressed and that is safe. More specifically regarding this cluster of recommendations, we talk about looking for uh, comprehensive solutions that can address legal and ethical risks of automated decision-making and profiling. Uh, if, uh, one of the ideas which, which we have been playing with is the, the famous notion by Wachter and Mittelstadt talking about right to reasonable interferences, which means that which you give meaningful control and choice over interferences and, pro and profiles uh, to data subjects, to citizens. A second recommendation is designing an EU-wide dynamic and mandatory high-risk assessment scheme, especially when you think about recent uh, reports by the European Commission talking about regulation of AI. We might want to look into what does sentiment analysis, emotional AI mean for society, and is there a high risk at stake at that moment. And in order to operationalize that, to make this actionable, we could develop further the ALTA idea, the, the assessment list for trustworthy artificial intelligence, and specifically focusing then on risks and potential impacts arising from media and technology sector. Finally, a last cluster we have been developing is what we have been calling cooperative responsibility and stakeholder engagement. Uh, this relates then to involving the relevant stakeholders in discussions on AI in media sector. This links, of course, foremost to accountability, making the different stakeholders accountable for their part in what is happening. Uh, looking into, of course, how this can um, further or improve societal and environmental well being, taking into account, again, diversity, non discrimination, and fairness, and based on the issue of transparency. Uh, more specifically, the kind of uh, recommendations we have been developing here is, first of all, if you want to have this kind of perspective, this cooperative responsibility perspective, you need to also involve the re relevant people and organizations in that regard. So in this regard, it might be very important to set up an advisory board, which does involve all the relevant stakeholders, and not only industry, not only government, but also civil society, for example. Uh, a second recommendation we have been discussing is fostering exchanges and best practices with other network organizations. There are already quite some organizations that are trying to deal with the impact, the digital transformation, the AI developments in the media and technology sector. We should aim to link up with these initiatives that already are existing. I'm talking, example, for example, about NAM, 
uh, the industry organization that tries to look into possible opportunities and risk of AI in the media sector. A third recommendation talking about allocation of funding, especially for those media industries, creative media industries that have been heavily impacted or that can be heavily impacted by AI, a little bit in line with one of the very recent initiatives uh, on an IP in creative media and the impact of AI on that by the European Parliament. Fourth one is incentivizing and developing educational trajectories in different areas not only talking about educating different professions or different uh, subsectors in the media and technology sector on AI, but also vice versa, uh, training, for example, uh, technology people on these kinds of social and ethical issues of AI and be sure that in uh, study programs, these kinds of issues are also being discussed, that they know what are the key requirements, what are the key uh, uh, values we want to take into account in these in these AI systems. This will then should lead to facilitating and strengthening workers' rights and public interest values in the media as AI systems further evolve and emerge. And finally, as a as a recommendation, we think it's very important to make the connection as much as possible uh, to the extent that this is not happening already with the general public. Talking about media data and AI literacy programs, uh, creating public awareness in different areas. Okay, this brings me to the conclusion. Uh, so which I want to then uh, discuss further on also in the round table is that this is really a call for action to get people involved in this kind of things, to make things actionable, do not leave them too complex in the technology side, too abstract on the ethical side, but really look for grounding of from an empirical perspective of what is happening with AI, not taking a kind of an over 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 exaggerated uh, perspective on this, not uh, thinking that things will happen by themselves uh, due to technology. Now trying to understand how different stakeholders need and are getting involved in these kinds of areas regarding AI and the media sector. Okay, this concludes my presentation. Uh, as I now would like to give, as I mentioned in the beginning, I would like to give the floor to uh, the uh, first speaker of the uh, external expert being invited. Uh, let me see where I have the overview of this. Uh, so the first speaker I would like to invite Professor um, Jose van Dijk uh, from the Utrecht University to give her take on these issues. Uh, Jose?